So, I am an artist, but I'm also a very big football fan, or soccer to our American friends. But what does beautiful art have to do with a beautiful game? Well, let's find out. So this was a news story that came out uh, just a few weeks ago, and I came across it when I was looking through the articles on the BBC News Art section one morning. And once I've seen it, it instantly caught my attention. And here's why. You see, I am a huge football fan, and also I am a huge Manchester United fan. I know. Boo. But I read through the uh, art stories on the BBC News app every couple of days, just to see if there's anything interesting happening that I might want to check out, that I might want to read about. And to my surprise, that morning, there was a picture of former Manchester United and Chelsea yeah. midfielder Juan Mata. At first, I thought well, someone at the BBC has made a little bit of a mistake there. No, not that mistake. Not, not talking about that one. But then I read the headline, football's creative talent teams up for an exhibition, and I, I knew I had to go in and read it. So let's go and take a quick little look at the article together. Former Manchester United star Juan Mata is to select an international squad of football's most creative talents to team up with leading artists to celebrate the beautiful game. The World Cup winner is assembling 11 players to collaborate on artworks that pay homage to artists on the pitch. Mata will kick off ha -ha, the project with performance artist Tino Segal in Manchester this summer. It will culminate with a major exhibition in the city in 2025. The Spanish midfielder said he was excited to come home and recruit a team of playmakers he admires for the Manchester International Festival. The Manchester International Festival is a biannual art event that takes place in, you guessed it, Manchester. And I don't really think that I would be incorrect in saying that many people would regard it as a very contemporary and very experimental art festival. Just some of the names of people who have collaborated and performed at the MIF in the past have include Damon Alborn and Jimmy Hewlett of Gorilla's Fame, Yoko Ono, Bjork, Kraftwerk, Elbow, Lou Reed, A New Order. Uh, performance artist Marina Abramovich, comedian Victoria Wood, actors Idris Elba and Willem Dafoe, and a veritable smorgasbord of dancers, of choreographers, of directors, opera singers, and even David Lynch. Because yeah, yeah, David Lynch would, wouldn't he? Of course he would. So right off the bat you can kind of get a little bit of an idea of the type of event that the MIF is. But even with this, the proposal put forward by Juan Mata, it did stand out as being a little bit different, even among this extremely eclectic group of performers. So my initial thoughts on this whole thing was, I thought it was a very interesting venture. And the reason that I thought that was as different as the types of performers that I listed above were, they were all artists. For a musician, their music is their art. For an actor, their performance is their art. For a director, their production is their art. And for David Lynch, living his life like a man who takes every single flavour of LSD for breakfast every single day is his art. But a footballer? Well, that's a very different ball game. Oh, had to do it. The project is called the Trequartista, Art and Football United. For those of you who don't watch football or have never played a football manager game, uh, Trequartista is a position on the football pitch, most commonly known by people today as the number 10. And historically speaking, that would be a position that would often be filled by the most creative player in a team. The number 10 should be the position that has the vision to see the perfect pass, the skill to execute it, and the creativity to do the unthinkable at a moment's notice. Names like Eric Cantona immediately come to my mind. Now let's have a little bit of a look at what Mata had to say about the project. From my side, it was all about trying to recognise players from the present and past. In my mind, they look like artists on the pitch. You can feel when you watch a player that feels different. The way he or she moves, the way they touch the ball. So many of the players that I admired when I was little, they used to play that position. And they normally played with a lot of talent so that they could make a difference in the game. I think we're seeing that position less and less. So this exhibition is all about trying to keep the conversation going about these kinds of players who are making a difference on the pitch. And many of them were kind of rebels in a way. They have a certain personality, a certain character that made them heroes for many people. And so it's very nice for us to bring them back to the conversation of football nowadays. 
Now, from the perspective of a football fan, I can completely understand what Juan Mata is talking about here. Football has evolved into a much more tactical sport, and success on the pitch at the very highest levels is often attributed to the analysis of stats and data, high levels of team cohesion, and a very strong work ethic off of the ball, and less and less about moments of individual creativity. Now, as someone who is extremely nerdy about my love of football, I do love the tactical side to it. Um, I, I like watching two managers come together, watching how they set up their own teams and then seeing as a game progresses how they make little tweaks and alterations to their team to try and better their opponents. I do like going and looking at the team sheets before a game starts, seeing which players are going to be playing, seeing who it is that a player is going to be up against from the other team and kind of looking at statistics to work out who's likely to come out better in, in those different kinds of scenarios. And for me, that is something that I think enhances my enjoyment of football as a whole. But even with that being said, I, I do still tend to agree with what Juan Mata is saying here. I remember growing up and seeing games of football being won and lost by moments of individual creativity and brilliance. I remember Ryan Giggs charging down the left-hand side of the pitch against Arsenal in the 1999 FA Cup semi-final replay and just tearing that team to pieces and winning the game. I remember Dimitar Berbatov's unbelievable flick up off his knee before hitting an overhead bicycle kick and scoring a goal against Liverpool. I remember that ridiculous goal Gareth Bale scored in the Champions League final against Liverpool. I remember everything that Cristiano Ronaldo ever did when he played for Manchester United. <sighs> yeah, me me maybe not everything. But the point still stands. In football, there has always been room for the kind of players who would draw you to the edge of your seat the second they got the ball to their feet. These are the types of players who make the beautiful game, well, beautiful. But with this continued evolution of football, these players are becoming more and more of a rarity. So let's go all Jose Mourinho and park the bus on all this football talk and jump into a little bit more about what this performance might actually look like. So as mentioned earlier in this article, Juan Mata's collaboration in this project is with Berlin-based artist Tino Segal. The performance is described, and this is a quote, as a playful choreographic exchange between a footballer, violinist, cyclist, and singing dancer. Oh, not again. How many times have we seen that? My terrible jokes aside, that description really shouldn't come as much of a surprise to anyone who's familiar with Segal's work. Segal is an artist who describes his work as constructed situations. Some of his most notable work include 2005's This Is So Contemporary, in which visitors would enter the exhibition space and be greeted by performers and dancers who would dance around the place and sing Oh, this is so contemporary, this is so contemporary, this is so contemporary, over and over and over and over again. Yeah, let's have a look. Okay. Another well-known piece of Segal's work was titled This Progress, and that took place in the Guggenheim Museum in New York. And in this progress, visitors would enter the gallery, which was completely empty at this point, and they would approach the this large ascending spiral ramp, and they would be met at the bottom by a small child who would ask them, what is progress? Uh, the child would then begin to lead the visitors up this spiral ramp and they would discuss the question amongst themselves until eventually they met a high school age student who would take over the, the conversation, uh, continue to lead them up this ramp and continue to ask more uh, interesting questions. And as they continued on up this ramp, they would eventually then meet uh, a young adult and then after that, uh, an older adult who eventually they would work all the way up to the top of the spiral staircase. Oh, that sounds fun, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So now that we've had a little bit of a look at the kind of performances that Tino Segal puts on, are we any closer to understanding what this collaboration with footballer Juan Mata might look like? No, nope, absolutely not. Nope, not even a little bit. This could be, this could be anything, literally anything. It'll just include a cyclist. So, okay, that was helpful. So with 
that incredible degree of insight from me. Let's just kind of jump right into my final thoughts on the entire thing. Look, I, I like art. I like football. I really like Juan Mata. I, I think it's safe to say that Tino Seghal's version of artistic expression isn't exactly my cup of tea, but that is absolutely fine. Uh, art is subjective, and at the end of the day, it is his own self-expression, and I'm not in any way saying that he isn't a good artist or the work that he produces isn't good. It's his self-expression and you can't do self-expression wrong. Your enjoyment of a piece of work or a performance or any type of art is entirely subjective. But ultimately, at the end of the day, this person is putting their own personal vision of a subject out into the world. And it's really not for us to say if it's good or if it's bad, just simply how we respond to it. And as I said, it's not necessarily uh, an avenue of art that I am particularly drawn to. The biggest takeaway that I think I have from this entire story is that the involvement of a football player like Juan Mata and whoever else takes those other roles that he enlists over the course of the next two years to take part in this presentation is just a really great way to get different eyes on the art world that otherwise might never look in its direction. I'm not, again, trying to insinuate that football fans are some sort of uncultured thugs. I'm just simply saying that, you know, a lot of young people will watch football and they'll look up to certain players. And if they see in the news that these players are involved in some kind of artistic project, it just might be an opportunity for them to want to go and to check it out, to see what it's all about. And then from there, if they enjoy it, they might go and check out the other performers and artists who are collaborating with them. And it's just an opportunity for perhaps some young football fans out there to find out that they really have an interest in art. We as a society, rightly or wrongly, very often hold up footballers as role models for the younger people who watch the sport. I remember whenever I was younger and I was watching football, to me, those players were these larger than life superhero-esque figures who I definitely looked up to and, and idolised in a lot of ways. I think for someone like Juan Mata, who has a, a huge global audience, who has the attention of millions of people all over the world, to take his platform and to shine it into the art world, it can only do good things for the art scene. But do let me know what you think about this subject in the comments down below. Are you interested in following up on this and checking out the exhibition? Do you think that this could be a good thing for the art world? I would love to hear your thoughts. As always, remember to click on that subscribe button if you haven't already. And do like and share the video because it really, really does help me out. Links to all of my social medias are in the description of the video below. And I will see you all again in the next one.